Joseph Caldwell. And we are the Sales Wolves. Ah That's right. We are the Sales Wolves, and this is the Sales Wolves Podcast. This is episode nine of the Sales Wolves Podcast. Did you just hold up eight fingers? Nine. Got all nine in there. And uh, we're going to be doing something uh, special on this podcast, on this episode. We talked about it last week uh, that we would do it, and we like to be uh, we like to do what we say we're going to do. No, we do do what we say we're going to do. Yeah, that's kind of what this whole podcast is all about. Right. Um, So we're going to go on Facebook Live right now. We've got it Facebook Live on sales uh, Facebook dot com. Wait till it pops up here. All right. So we are live. On Facebook, are we alive on the other one yet? We're waiting. Technical difficulties. We are live. So, Facebook.com slash Sales Podcast and Facebook.com slash Tyler Harris Page, Facebook.com slash Joseph Caldwell Page. All three of those we're about to be live on. We're live on two of them right now, about to be on a third. But we are going to give away, for those of you that are watching this live, We've got a couple Ask Gary V books. We kind of like the book. We kind of like him. We kind of like him, and yeah. we felt like, you know, why have one when you can have 750? When you can have 750, yeah. This is like 400 or so. We've got another 300 in the basement of my house still, yeah. and like 17 more boxes. We had a hole in the wall and had to plug it with something. <laughs> <laughs> my child lives in a house made of Gary V books. <laughs> <laughs> but, but we're going to give away. Some Ask Gary V books, which, to be quite honest with you, it's one of the best books that I've ever read. When it comes Absolutely. when it comes to strategic, tactical advice, and the reason why I like it so much is because I've got insane ADD. I'm all over the place. It's hard for me to sit down and read a, a book. I'll get through a page. And I'm like, oh, what did I just read? But this is set up in a Q and A structure, and because of that, there's a question, answer question answer easy split into read. sections yep. you can easily just dive right in get out get in get out get what you need do it by by a chapter on what the topics is it's incredible it's an awesome book um, so we're gonna give away five of those here's how you get one of those books we need you to number one share this live feed number two we want you to tag three people in the comments below it would be ideal if those three people would be someone that may be interested in what we're talking about, not like your mom's yeah, sister. Yeah, would be nice. Brother. But whoever it is, tag three people in the comments, yep. and in a few minutes after we get going with the podcast, we're going to give away five of these books. We're going to give away five to each. That's ten books. Can we do it? Can we afford it? It's not the right math. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to give away five uh, to each. Oh, there's three of them. So we're going to give away 15. <laughs> Holy cow, we're going to give away a hundred. That's why I asked. You get a book, you get a book, you get a book. (laughs) We're going to give away five. How about that? And then we'll go from there and see how many people really want one. So with that, we're going to get right into the podcast, (laughs) which today's podcast, episode nine, we want to start off by telling you what this podcast is all about, number one. Right, yeah. So what's it all about, Joe? Um, This podcast... Sales Wolf What's podcast. the podcast in general, yeah. Oh, do it anyway, mm. right? Are you talking about what we're doing the podcast on today or what we're... In general, why we're doing this? Oh, no, we're doing it to appreciate the most valuable people uh, in the world, and that's salespeople. Um, and we believe that no matter what your career, no matter what you, or lack of career, mm-hmm. uh, no matter what you do or don't do, the skills you have to have to be a good salesperson, um, everybody needs more. So first, we do it to appreciate salespeople. Second, we do it to uh, to provide information for people free of charge. Here's the thing: we provide the information, and tactical, useful information for you in your everyday life, and um, because we know we do this for free because we know that you're going to pay a dreadful price implementing it. Mm-hmm. Right? It's it's a cost to be successful. It's a it's a huge cost to to develop yourself and 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 to change personally 
So we want to provide you the tools to do that. And, and it's it's just the law of attraction. Yep. It's, it's paying it forward. It's putting the information out there. Both of us have had people in our lives that poured information into us and are the reason why we are here. Joseph's one of those people for me. He poured information into me and I became a different person and became more successful because of that information that was given to me at no cost. Yeah. And we want to now do that for other people. And that's what brings us joy is getting those emails like we've already got from people that have been like, hey, I watched episode five and it was amazing. And because of that, I did this, this, and this, and I got this result. That's, right. that's the it's only incredible. reason why we're doing this. So, And you know, there are people say, people, I'll get introduced to people in business and they'll go, hey, this guy, he's a self-made man. <laughs> and I'm like, no, the hell he isn't. Mm. Or no, the hell she he grew isn't. Up in a bubble. Yeah, he grew up in a bubble. Never had an interaction <laughs> with anybody. He's self-made. No, that doesn't happen. That does not happen. I can, I can point, I can point to the mentors in my life. Um, that have absolutely impacted me. And I, I, I get every bit of information out of them that I can get absolutely. and then implement it. And it gives them great joy. So, so before we dive right in, again, for those of you that are joining the live feed, because there's more people joining as we keep going, um, the way that you're going to win one of these Ask Gary V books, again, is to share this live feed and to tag three people in the comments that you think might, uh, might enjoy or may benefit from this podcast. At the very end, in a few minutes here, we're going to uh, go through and look through the comments and we're going to pick out five people that are going to get this Ask Gary V book. And this is something we're going to do on a regular basis, so make sure you keep tuning in. We record these podcasts on Friday and then we upload the podcast from the pre previous week onto Facebook, onto YouTube, onto iTunes, onto SoundCloud, so on episode Friday. Eight will go up today. Wait till you guys see episode eight because yeah. we have completely, completely upped our game. We have yeah. somebody new that's doing our editing that did an incredible job. Wait till you see the intro. It's going to blow you away. With that, going into episode nine, yep. today's topic is titled, Define the Moment and do it anyway. It's really two topics, but they go hand in hand because you're going to do it in a, anyway when you have those defining moments. Right. So what we want to talk about first is defining moments or how to define the moment. Do you want to start? Man, I, well, we were talking earlier and, and um, a lot of people point to this uh, huge winning shot mm -hmm. in the game defining moment and that burning bush yeah some burning bush experience or uh, you know i don't know how to define it i've never had one right sure. i've won at high levels mm -hmm. but those weren't my defining moments they all happened far far before that they were all very very little um you know you take a ship and you get it one degree off course and and a couple days later you're completely off course. Mm -hmm. So the defining moments are the little things, the little things. And you were talking about a couple of them, hitting the snooze button. Yeah, I mean, because you know? just when you say the word defining, defining sounds like this grandiose, it sounds like this large, monumental, yeah. life-changing thing. But it's so small and they're hidden throughout your day. And the way that you identify them is become by becoming more self-aware. That's the way that you can identify these little moments. But that's one of the biggest ones, and it's the first one that happens to you every single day. When your alarm goes off in the morning, that is a defining moment in how you start your day. Right. You can hit snooze, and you can go back to sleep for 15 more minutes, 20 more minutes, an hour longer. Yeah. Or you can get up out of bed, get a shower, get doing something productive, get to the gym, get to the office, get to whatever you're doing. And by making that, it's all about a choice. And by making that decision in that moment to do the right thing versus doing the wrong thing, you have set the course for the rest of your entire day. True. That in itself is a defining moment. But those defining moments go throughout your day. Throughout the day. You think of like you go to lunch and you have that lull after lunch where you're like, oh, I'm just going to sit here and I'm just going to you know, check out Facebook for a minute or I'm going to yeah. sit here and just kind of veg out for about 30 minutes. Number one, the defining moment happened at lunch. Or am I going to order this crap I know yeah. I shouldn't put in my body? Mm -hmm. Or am I going to order something that's healthy that I know I should put in my body that'll give me the energy to then go and make that, man, I'm going to get stuff done after lunch. I'm going to be, I'm going to be wired. Or, or taking an hour to, to take yeah. lunch versus today. I was so busy doing what we were doing with meetings back to back to back to back that I literally had to call and get someone to bring me lunch and ate it. Literally had like one hand on the keyboard and eating with the other yep. hand because you can work through lunch. Um, and you know what's funny? Oh! And there goes one of the Facebook One of the live feeds. The <laughs> suction cup just came off the window. Uh-oh! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for that if we just made somebody really dizzy or... 
if you just wrecked a, your car. If we just triggered for somebody. Um, <laughs> but uh, damn, I forgot what I was going to say. But That's those defining one. moments, they go they're, they're throughout your day. Um, they're just moments in time where there's a fork in the road. Yep. Basically, there's a fork in the road and you can do the right thing. You can do the thing that will keep you on course or move you on course towards Most of the where time you're it's going. the uncomfortable thing. It's probably always. Yeah. Always. It's yeah. always. It's always the uncomfortable thing. And because of that, that's why we like to, to discuss these topics hand in hand. Because in those situations, because of the fact that it's, un, that it's uncomfortable, yeah. is the very reason why we have really just embraced it like in doctrine the the do it anyway mentality we have just lived it because in those moments in that moment when you want to hit snooze you're tired you got two hours sleep three hours sleep you want to roll back in bed and just pull the covers up and stay nice and warm everything about you you don't feel like getting up but you do it anyway yep. every single one of those moments involves every defining moment is a do it anyway moment absolutely and you're either going to choose to do it anyway or you're going to choose not to do it and both of those will set the course where you win your day win your week win your month and ultimately win your year but it's through self-awareness and being aware to be able to identify those situations where you can say holy crap this is one of those moments like i've, I've been in those situations yep. this week i was in one of those situations i was sick all week long sinus infection just felt like crap and i had meetings that i had to go to and i can remember certain times where i was laying in bed in my hotel room and i was like no one would blame me for not going to this meeting that's right no one would fault me for it at all i can call them and say look I'm sick, I've got a sinus infection, I don't feel well, I don't want to make your people sick, I shouldn't be there, I can't come. But I did it anyway. And even though I didn't feel good, I still went and I wrote policies. If you hadn't gone, you know what I would have said. Oh yeah, and so, I mean, you can crack the whip of do it anyway, you know, as a leader, but... <laughs> <laughs> but, but ultimately, it comes down to your personal decision I was decision thinking to when you it. said that you had one hand on the keyboard and you were eating, I was like, God, has he not figured it out that you don't have to eat lunch today? <laughs> did he, I'm just messing. Did he not get his IV this morning? Did he not get his IV? I sent over a lady with an IV to his, get him. His, his stomach tube. <laughs> <laughs> Feeding tubes here at the office. It's way more efficient. <laughs> oh, but you know what, though? This is what you're talking about there with the defining moments is you can actually... Not just when you become self-aware and you start seeing these defining moments, that's one thing. And you start seeing the little forks in the road. They're not big forks, right? Hit a snooze button, nine minutes later you get up. It was a little fork, it was a little fork, right? But what happens after that is you start creating defining moments. Okay, so I go to bed at, and I'm exhausted and I've worked a, a, an 18, 20, 22 hour day. It's midnight. And, and I set my alarm for five, for four, to get up early. I've got, maybe I get four hours of sleep. Maybe I get five hours of sleep. Um, but you know what I set it for anyway? Probably early as hell. Like two. <laughs> so you only get two <clears throat> hours of sleep. How far can you push? You create a defining moment. You create a fork in the road. You create a situation that is just uncomfortable. Like I was telling you before, you know, when you start doing okay and you live in a nice place, you got hot and running water, you got all the food you need, all your bills are paid, everything's okay, you know. When you reach that, that type of comfort, it's almost like a lull. It lulls you to sleep. Mm -hmm. And so I started going and buying 10 pounds or, or 10 20 pound bags of ice I'd fill up a jacuzzi tub and lay in it until I couldn't hardly get myself out of it like people were worried I was gonna die in there mm -hmm. and uh, and so because it was uncomfortable I created a fork in the road I created a defining moment I know that's not for everybody I'm just weird but but Pete you when you're working out you do the same thing at a workout Absolutely. you press yourself you put that much more weight on you put you, you do that much more cardio or you're registering your heart rate and you see just how high can I get it and how long can I keep it there and then you take it another step further and these defining moments to choose which way you're gonna go it's all an internal dialogue I actually had a meeting today with um, with Tom Shia, who is a 23-year veteran, Navy SEAL, unbelievable guy. Great podcast he has that he does. Um, 
awesome stuff. He's going to come in and best talk seller. to our organization. Best, best seller, seller right now. It, the book's unbreakable. It's incredible. You got to get that book if you if you if you want to grow personally um, and understand how to grow in every aspect of your life. But uh, but talking to him about internal dialogue mm. and inter understanding the internal dialogue and training that is how you win in SEAL school. Is that crazy? It's not being the strongest. It's treating it like a game. Yeah. It's not being the strongest, the fastest, the, but it was that internal dialogue where you make those decisions ahead of time. So anyway, it was fascinating. So I'm, I got a couple of things that did some research on this. Before I go into these uh, specific quotes, um, I do want to remind everybody on Facebook Live that we are giving away five of the Ask Gary V books by Gary Vaynerchuk. And in order to win one, you have to share this live feed and then tag three people in the comments section underneath the live feed. So tag three people and share it. And we're going to give away five Ask Gary V books here in just a little bit. But I wanted to give a couple of, uh, man, I did some research on defining moments. And the interesting thing was when I looked up defining moments, it was mostly about like these big life changing things. Right, right. And it started, I started to doubt. I was like, Am I just wrong in how I think about this? And and observe the masses, do the opposite. Yeah, well, <laughs> exactly. It became so much more clear that it is that that people don't understand it in this way, and it makes it so much more important to get this message out there. And so, what I want to read is a couple of uh, quick quotes right here. It says, "When often talk, uh, we often talk about defining moments that changed our life. We often place too much emphasis on these singular moments of success or failure. These individual moments are rarely isolated events. They almost always emerge from a prolonged series of seemingly unimportant choices that cleared the way for that moment. What matters is rarely the moment itself, but what led up to it and what follows. Awesome. That right there is huge. And then this next one is even bigger. While this emphasis on process may appear to trivialize moments of inspiration and success or ring false to those who do feel that their life course drastically shifted because of a split second decision, it is liberating on a daily basis. Whatever high achievements or evil atrocities you have committed before today. This very moment is within your grasp. This very moment holds a decision for you. You may choose to continue on that path you are on, or you can choose to begin to move in the direction of the sort of inner life you were born to have. You do not this moment have the power or strength to be the person you would like to be, but you have the opportunity to begin moving in that direction. This very moment, you can begin to change. And holy crap! That's powerful. They talk about liberating. That's fr that's that is freeing. freeing to know that it that it does not matter what you've done in the past, good or bad. Good or bad. We talk about here everything that we do as part of a meritocracy in our organization that we're building. Everything is built on current credibility. Yeah. And so it doesn't matter what you did last quarter, whether you crushed it or whether you were you weren't even there. Right. Today is everything. Today you can start heading down a path to where you can absolutely change your entire year today. And so that is hugely liberating. And then this last quote by a guy named George McDonald, I thought was just fascinating. And it's a little, it's a little high level, uh, but I thought it was very, very interesting. He said, therefore a thousand stages, each in itself, all but valueless, are of inestimable are of inestimable worth, meaning too great to calculate, huge worth, as the necessary and connected gradations of an infinite progress. A condition which of declination would indicate a devil may of growth indicate a saint. So it's not about what you've done, it's about where you're going. And it's right. about the trajectory that you're on absolutely man and do it anyway that mentality in in finding those defining moments there's something interesting we've i've got some uh friends that own a company called phenom elite and it's an athletic apparel company yeah. they do custom company. they do custom gloves you have the gloves where you put your palms together and it's got the logo they can put anything on that it's phenomenal 
phenomenally. It's, it's, it's phenomenally. It's, it's phenomenally. It's phenomenal. <laughs> but but they have this whole deal that they do around these defining moments, yeah. and they interview these athletes. And they interviewed C.J. Edwards, who yeah. was you know the starting pitcher in the World Series for the Chicago Cubs this yeah. past year. And it was so awesome because when they did his story and they really got to know him on a personal level, he's from a very very small town, and they were on this. They were out um, talking on this old Little League baseball field. And he, and he said, you know, a lot of people, when they talk about their defining moments, they would think like, man, when you were pitching in the World Series, right, right. Chicago Cubs in the World, it was the biggest sporting event ever for them to do that. Like, that's got to be like the biggest defining moment for, like, for the rest of your life. And he's like, no, 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 no. On this field. When little league field, this little league field, <laughs> when I was at this stage and I was pitching and my parents and uncle and family and, and people from our neighborhood and they were all packed in those stands. And if I messed up, I had to answer to them. Those moments where I had to rise to the occasion and build that pressure and be able to perform. He's like, that was my defining moment. Absolutely. That's what put me on the trajectory to where I'm at. So it's very easy to look at someone's life and be like, Oh, their defining moment was obviously when, you know, Oprah listed it as her one of her favorite things. You know, yeah, that was yeah, a defining yeah. moment. Her. They had their success. It was no, right. it was it was ten years before that yeah. that led them to ultimately get there. You That's wanna talk awesome. you wanna talk about do it anyway and then we'll wrap this thing up? Man, just do it anyway. It's always <laughs> miserable. <laughs> you don't want to talk about it, but can, I don't want to talk about do it, it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to talk about it, but I'll do it anyway. So um as you see those forks in the road, you have to have already made the conscious decision and have the internal dialogue to just do it anyway. You have to already have made the decision to just do it anyway. It's a pain in the butt. It's never comfortable. All of these decisions, they don't represent comfort, they represent discomfort, but only growth takes place in the uncomfortable. It never takes place in the comfortable. Again, only growth takes place in the uncomfortable, never in the comfortable. And the decision to do it anyway is always uncomfortable. So I did some research on really what, where do it anyway came from, what it traced back to. And uh, what I want to do oh, right, great. Well, well, what I want to do right now is I want to go ahead and end this Facebook Live, Jason. So we're going to end the Facebook Live. Again, share it, tag three people in the comments, and I'm going to post here in a few minutes when we wrap up this recording. I'm going to post who wins the Ask Gary V books. But make sure you watch this podcast next Friday so that you can hear where the actual origin of the Do It Anyway came oh, from. It great. actually came from Mother Teresa. You're going to want to see that, so make sure that you tune in next Friday to watch that. But we appreciate you guys getting on Facebook Live. Absolutely. We appreciate your attention. We appreciate you giving us a minute or a few minutes of your time. And uh, we'll see you next time on Facebook Live. See ya. Thank you. So we're done with the Facebook Live portion of this. But this really, truly was fascinating. So hit publish on those. Make sure you hit publish. It was truly fascinating because I didn't know. Like, for all intents and purposes, I thought Andy Frisella made it up. Right. Like, like, literally, because he was the first person I ever heard say it. Yeah, yeah. And he said it so loud with so many expletives around it that I was just like, man, that's probably his that's deal. That's probably his. Like, copyright. Right. Here, we'll switch off. You read the first Yeah, one. so when I looked at it, what it finally traced back to is a guy named Kent, uh, Kent Keith in 1968 yeah. that wrote a poem that Mother Teresa really embodied. She, she would share it a lot. She, I think she actually, like drew it on the walls of some school in some country huh. and it was like this this big deal um, so i'll start off this poem it says people are illogical unreasonable and self-centered love them anyway if you do good people will accuse you of selfish ulterior motives do good anyway if you are successful you will win false friends and true enemies succeed anyway the good you do today will be forgotten tomorrow do good anyway Honesty and frankness make you vulnerable. Be honest and frank anyway. The biggest men and women with the biggest ideas can be shot down by the smallest men and women with the smallest minds. Think big anyway. Man, that's a big one. People favor underdogs, but follow only top dogs. Fight for a few underdogs anyway. What you spend years building may be destroyed overnight build anyway people help people really need help but may attack you if you do help them help people anyway <laughs> i've seen that so many times <laughs> give Last the world one. give the world the best you have and you'll get kicked in the teeth 
Give the world the best you have anyway. Do it anyway. It embodies do it anyway. I'm just envisioning Mother Teresa telling somebody about getting kicked in the teeth. That would be awesome. <laughs> it would be awesome. <laughs> be but it was, it was so cool to see this uh, track originate so, so long ago and the evolution of what, like, I just thought it was something that I talked about all the time on Facebook Live and yeah. heard from Andy Frisella, but, but really the, the beginnings of where that actually came from and came from such a good, a good place. But that doing any mentality, it's, it's what separates the good from the great. Oh, yeah. And again, not to, not to just beat a dead horse, but self-awareness is the key to identifying those moments when you can do it anyway. I have this conversation with myself 10 times a day at least. I'll be in a situation and I'll say, crap. I, I can like, I can, it's like one of those things, like you know how people when they have like a, um, a tremor or they have like Tourette's, they can feel it coming. Like it's like, they can, they can feel it. Well, they say that like, you know, you can feel it coming and so like, you try you... to like brace it. <laughs> but you try to like brace for it because you know it's coming. You gotta wrap it up. I can feel those times coming where I'm like, I'm, I'm about to be in a moment where I can choose to do this or choose to do that. And I need to do it anyway right now. And sometimes it is so difficult and you're not going to do them all. Right. You're not going to, you're not going to nail it every single time. But if you do more than you don't, yep. that's how you win the day, win the week, win the month and win the, the year. year. Uh, so with that's that, awesome. that's our uh, episode nine of the sales wolves podcast on defining the moment in those defining moments and do it anyway. Uh, we appreciate every single one of you. Please share this podcast. Make sure that your friends and family can check it out. If you enjoy it, just take a minute, write this, write this minute, right now, share this podcast with everybody. That's the only way that you can pay us back. That's it. Absolutely. That's We're going to be doing more Facebook Live interaction between this. This podcast will only get better every it's only single week. Better. I mean, it can't yep. get, well, I'm not it can't get worse. <laughs> <laughs> but we hope that this may have been one of those little defining moments so. um, of your day really uh, today. And we hope everybody has a uh, great weekend. And we look forward to talking to you soon. And with that, I am Tyler Harris. I'm Joseph Caldwell. And we are the sales. Ah!